Short time, live and breathe on these streets Like a lost child, watch the world pass us by As we play in the dirt, building castles in our minds Cause we got no place to go If you close your eyes, we'll try to rise Above the noise If only for a second a day We could walk where the streets were paved with gold oh. In the city of hope, where the light shine bright We roam the streets and pray for the time Things that make me most angry is when uh, politics and self-interest get in the way of the things I need to do to help a child. Uh, there's so much bureaucracy that we have to fight with on a daily basis. Uh, everything from what we have to go through, uh, the paperwork we have to fill out uh, to get a, you know, months of paperwork to get a donation of a used, broken down computer from a major computer manufacturer sometimes. or uh, the things that we have to go through in order just to get our uh, nonprofit certification in order, the things we have to go through from the children's councils. Uh, when we know that we're doing everything right and in the best interest of the child, and uh, they're trying to prove that we are in uh, 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 violation of some of some uh, uh, political statute or some uh, uh, political philosophy, and uh, that costs us hours and hours of time and lots of money. And so that's the most frustrating thing about dealing, you know, in, in Brazil in such a bureaucratic environment uh, on a daily basis. You know, sometimes the, the enormity of the problem is just absolutely overwhelming. When, when we hear the numbers, and the numbers are a bit all over the place, but we know that there are millions of kids on the streets of Brazil. And when a child is on the streets, the statistics tell us they have three to five years of life, and that's it. And even those three to five years are just absolutely marked by every conceivable kind of abuse and exploitation. If we see a girl that's 12 years old, we assume that she's been pushed into prostitution. That's just the way the numbers are. We see them all the time. Virtually every child that we have here at Hope is a child that came out of some form of exploitation or abuse. The, one of the hidden problems that's not talked about a lot in Brazil is a problem of incest. We are story after story, and usually it's a stepfather. The, one of the favelas where we work, uh, there's about uh, somewhere around 70, 80% of the folks in there are single family homes. And there's a stepfather or a boyfriend that is in and out of the home, and over and over again, that person is abusing the little girls. Uh, we went to a home about a year ago, and we're talking to the mother. She'd asked to see us, and we were sat down and we talked to her. She had a daughter that was 13, and she said, every day my boyfriend is raping my little girl. It happens every single night. And we asked her what she was gonna do about it. She says, I can't do anything about it. If I go to the authorities, he'll kill me and he'll kill the little girl too, and then he'll disappear. And so she asked us to go to the authorities and, and to talk to them and see what we could do. So our social workers reported her to, to the folks that were in charge, and their question to the social workers were, are you sure she's not 14? No, she's 13. Well, it, what's the issue with being 14? If she's 14, it's no longer a crime. It's considered, even when it's forcible, if they're in the same home, it's still considered consensual once the child turns 14. The social worker's answer was, well, we'll just wait three months and then it won't be our problem anymore. And we see things like that ha happen over and over again. There's a system here that is absolutely broken. and. We can't take care of all the kids, but there are some kids that we can really have an impact in their lives. We have kids here at Hope who have death warrants on them. A father stole money from a drug lord. A, a mother didn't turn the money into her pimp. They don't just come in and kill the offender. They put out a death warrant on the entire family. We have kids whose pictures we cannot allow to, 
allowed to appear on film, in any of our presentations, on any of our publications, on our website, because they're essentially being hidden out from people that would like to kill them. Uh, our kids experience, our kids, our girls experience incest. Uh, that's the one that people don't talk about internationally anymore. We, we hear about trafficking, we hear about prostitution, we hear about drug abuse. What you don't hear about is the epidemic of incest that is going on in this country and I assume it's going on in other places too. Philip came to Brazil because he wanted to to carry on the work that his dad had begun actually in Ethiopia and he had seen the way that that impacted lives and he had seen where so many of those kids had gone and how they'd gone on to do great things and he wanted the same kind of thing to happen for the kids in Brazil and he came here without any money to start the program without the hope of an orphanage and, and in less than two decades, we have three primary campuses, we have uh, graduate homes, we have a program that works, and we have thousands of kids that have gone through this program. And so many of them, they look at Philip and they recognize that their lives are changed because of his commitment to them. I've never known anyone who could see a problem and see a solution and, and then discern that path. He, he understands where they are and where they need to be, but more importantly, he understands the path from one to the other. And that's a rare talent. I think um, the, the best moment in my life for at this point was seeing two of our kids graduate from college. That was incredible for us, to think that these kids that we were hoping that they'd get an eighth grade education and, and to see them this year graduate from college, one of them straight A's, robotic engineering, um, you know, and both firm in the church, loving the Lord, um, that, that was an amazing moment for us. And they're both doing, and there's, there's a long line behind them. When Niana, our first graduate, um, graduated from the program and she went back, the girl said to her, what's it like? Are you hungry? Are you eating? I mean, they just had no vision for what the possibility would be. And I think that even though this first generation that is now graduating and making their mark, um, they had it the hardest. But now the other kids are going to have examples of what the possibilities for them are. And um, that's really exciting. <laughs> So much in a short time, live and breathe on these streets like a lost child. Watch the world pass us by as we play in the dirt, building castles in our minds. Cause we got no place to go. If you close your eyes, we'll try to rise above the noise. If only for a second today. We could walk where the streets were paved with gold. Oh. In the city of hope, where the light shine bright, we roam these streets and pray for the time. Someone will hear these tears that we cry. In the arms of the Redeemer, grant us salvation or not. 